In this lesson, we will examine a feature of data sufficiency questions that will sometimes help you identify mistakes you may have made. We will examine this important feature by way of example. Here we want to find the value of x. Statement 1 tells us that 2 times x is equal to 6. When we solve this equation for x, we can see that x must equal 3. Since we can be certain that the value of x is 3, statement 1 is sufficient. Now on to statement 2. This tells us that x plus 1 is equal to 3. When we solve this equation for x, we can see that x must equal 2. Since we can be certain that the value of x is 2, statement 2 must be sufficient. Now can you see the problem here? From statement 1, we concluded with certainty that x must equal 3. And from statement 2, we concluded with certainty that x must equal 2. Now the important feature of data sufficiency questions is that the two statements always provide true information. If this is the case, then the two statements can never contradict each other. Since the two statements in this question contradict each other, this could never be an official GMAT question. Okay, so how is this supposed to help us tackle data sufficiency questions? Well, consider the following example. Here we want to find the value of x. Statement 1 provides us with a nice quadratic equation involving x. To solve this equation, we will first factor the left-hand side, and from here we can see that if x plus 2 times x plus 3 is equal to 0, then x must equal negative 2 or negative 3. Now statement 2 also provides a quadratic equation involving x. Once again, we will first factor the left-hand side. From here we can see that if x minus 4 times x minus 6 is equal to 0, then x must equal 4 or 6. At this point we should spot the problem. From statement 1 we concluded that x must equal negative 2 or negative 3, and from statement 2 we concluded that x must equal 4 or 6. Now how can it be true that x equals either negative 2 or negative 3 and x equals either 4 or 6? It cannot be true. So it appears that these two statements contradict each other, but we know that the two statements in a data sufficiency question never contradict each other. So we must have made a mistake somewhere in our calculations. Can you spot the mistake? Well, the problem is right here. We incorrectly factored the left-hand side. So let's try that again. Now, when we factor the left-hand side correctly, we can see that if x minus 12 times x plus 2 is equal to 0, then x must equal 12 or negative 2. Notice that the two statements no longer contradict each other. Statement 1 tells us that x must equal negative 2 or negative 3, and statement 2 tells us that x must equal 12 or negative 2. When we combine both statements, we can see that x must equal negative 2. So statements 1 and 2 alone are each insufficient, but the two statements combined are sufficient, so the answer here is C. To summarize, if you are tackling a data sufficiency question and the two statements appear to contradict each other, then that means you must have made a mistake somewhere and you will have to go back and recheck your calculations.